Welcome to the Maura Sweeney Podcast. Maura is an international speaker and the trademark ambassador of happiness with a passion for personal responsibility. She weaves insightful questions with personal stories to challenge your mindsets and empower your best and happiest self from the inside out. Here's Maura with today's podcast for you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Living Happy Inside Out with yours truly, Maura Sweeney. Since this is the beginning of 2020, what I consider a very auspicious year for a number of reasons, I wanted to extend today's podcast a little beyond what I normally do. Today, what I want to do for those maybe who have been listening for a while, but especially for those who might be tuning in for the first time, I want to provide the reason, or better said, let's say the genesis for my doing this podcast with the Living Happy Inside Out mantra. Um, And also, I want to share a little bit about what I personally hope to get out of it as the hostess of this podcast, um, which may surprise you. Secondly, I'm going to introduce the podcast topic, which I do in every podcast. In this case, it'll involve the house in which we dwell or the house in which you dwell because this podcast is ultimately all about you. Thirdly, I'm going to give you, as always, a takeaway or some action advice by the time we close so that after you've heard this podcast, you'll have an opportunity to internalize it, make it your own, and use it to your advantage so that you too could live happy from the inside out. First of all, let's take a look at the genesis of this podcast and more importantly, the reason behind it. The podcast is called Living Happy Inside Out, and there's a reason for it. And many people have said, well, what exactly do you mean by that? Have you ever had something in your own life that is so crystal clear, you think everybody ought to understand it, but maybe not? Well, in my case, this idea of living happy inside out, or better said, living happy from the inside out, had its genesis as far back as, let's say, when I was around eight or nine years old, when I realized there were certain things in my own life as a child, certain things in my experience that were not making me happy. Oftentimes I felt very restricted. I felt um, that I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. Maybe I couldn't express myself in many ways the way I desired to. And in many cases, it left me feeling very unhappy. And let's say this way, more than that, very vulnerable and uh, very heavy. So what I learned to do um, as a child was because I couldn't control what was going on on the outside of me, I wouldn't instead go within saying, well, you know what? I can't change the outside, but what I can do is change the way I think about it, change the way I feel about myself and my circumstances, put myself into another frame of mind, which would often change my energy level, change my expectations, change my outlook, and make me feel a lot better. So I might have started it as a child, but that same process of living from the inside out, ended up being with me throughout my university years, um, my years in corporate life, my years even as uh, a parent, a mother, that I would always think if I want to develop myself, I need to always go within. I need to work within. I need to assess where I was living, what I was thinking about. And so today, here I am, not only with a podcast, but with a website, with various writings, with books, with a lot of uh, radio and podcast interviews elsewhere, as well as a public speaking career, where I inspire other people to go within and think about where they're living within so that they, in a sense, become the masters of their own ship. They become the controllers of their responses, their reactions, etc., to just about anything that would happen to them in life. And really, bottom line, what is my hope or my why for doing everything I do? It's because I've always believed, and I would say rightly so, that If we're going to change our world, if we're going to go from the current world we live in that often focuses on uh, duality, upsetment, um, 
fears, division, strife, negative competition, if we're ever going to get out of that cycle, then we need to change from within one by one. And as we change our internal lives, we also change the outside world and society. And frankly, if you're anything like me, you really do want to see a better, more harmonious society, knowing that when people are more harmonious, a lot more things get accomplished for the good. So that is my reason and genesis for the podcast, Living Happy Inside Out with Maura Sweeney. Now let's go into the idea of 2020. I can remember the turning of the last millennium, going from 1999 to the year 2000. There were so many people at the time that were looking forward to something brand new, something big happening. And if you want to look back, we really didn't have the major turning over into a new era of greatness. Um, maybe as some had anticipated, although there might have been others that were afraid of Y2K, um, which again goes typically into the way our world operates of fear-based. But when I think about 2020, it keeps beaming back at me. And I'm reminded in a sense of 2020 vision. More than that, I'm, res I'm reminded of the adage that said, you know, 2020 hindsight is always better, or things are always better with 2020 hindsight. Meaning, if we look backwards with a sense of history, and we have a chance to view things in the rearview mirror, we can often come up with some better viewpoints. We can see things in the light of history. We can understand things a little bit better. And hopefully, we can clarify not only where we were, but maybe a new vision for where we want to go. So with that in mind, this may be your first episode you've ever tuned in. Congratulations. Um, if you happen to be hearing this 2020 New Year episode for the first time, don't discount it because all of my episodes are designed for any day of the year, any day of your life. They're really evergreen in nature, and that's because they're all story-based. So let's talk about today's episode topic. And in this case, I've been thinking about the house in which you dwell the house in which we all dwell. And even though we may live, let's say, in the same building that has various condominiums that all appear the same on the outside, everything that distinguishes us usually comes from within. Those are the unique characteristics. It's the way we design the inside of our, our dwelling place, or maybe what we walk into and see when we arrive. I've always been intrigued by the way people design space, but today I want to think about this and encourage you to think about this in a new way. What if you were to view the house in which you dwell, not only as your body, but the mind and the thought life that you possess, as if you have put furniture, window dressings, um, Maybe things that match or things that don't go along. Maybe things you like and maybe things you don't like within your own dwelling place, your own mind, your own thought life. Because that place is so deep and so powerful. It's literally ground zero for the ultimate way in which you will experience your life externally. And I want to give you, as always, a little bit of a story base from my own background. And as I tell you this, I want you to be thinking about the house in which you grew up, your dwelling space, and how you might have carried along some things that may be working for you or maybe not. And in the case where you've brought along some items um, from your youth and the house in which you were brought up with, maybe you want to make some adjustments for this new year of 2020. So, the house in which you dwell. One of the things, if I could come up with a banner title for the house in which I dwelled as a child, uh, it came to me maybe in my college years, and it was the house of I can't. The house of I can't. If there was a name over it, that would be the name I'd give it. And I want to tell you why. I referenced early on, there were things in my early life that I felt very daunted by or that things that didn't make me happy. But I could also remember 
so many times being told, I can't. Now, maybe I could think about my grandmother. We had moved in with my grandmother when my grandfather passed away. And we also happened to have for a while my great-grandmother living there. So I had a lot of external influences. For starters, I had a great-grandmother that never left the house except to go to the chiropodist, which was a doctor for her feet, or to get her hair done. Beyond that, she had literally spent a lifetime indoors. And I want you to think about that very clearly when it comes to the idea of being very restricted or very confined. So that was person A. Person B, as an influencer, would have been my grandmother. Now, my grandmother was a pistol of a woman in many ways. She was extremely, you know, courageous and and um, and strong. But I will tell you, she was also extremely daunted, and I would even say haunted by fears, and specifically fears related to superstitions. It was very interesting, and I could see that in her. In fact, I want to say one of her fears slash superstitions had to do with the fear of abduction or danger coming to children. Uh, One of the biggest things I could remember, um, I was going to an eighth grade dinner dance with a friend of the family. Now imagine, here I am all dressed up in in my dress and this young boy comes over to get me and my grandmother says before I leave after, oh more, you look cute in that dress. Now make sure, Eddie, that when you cross that street, you hold Maura's hand. And I'm thinking, this is so funny. I'm a young teenager and my grandmother is afraid for me to cross a street because somehow she thinks I'll get clipped or maybe somebody else will grab me. So therefore, we need an eighth grade boy to hold my hand. Think about that. There was another time where I was coming home from school and I was a little bit late, maybe five, 10 minutes late. Uh, It could have been as much as 15. And the school was maybe a half a block away, my grandfather, my grandmother was such a wreck out in the driveway when I finally came down the street that she, she was practically crying and told me she had already called the police because she thought someone had abducted me. I want you to think about this and stories like this that, that are not going to be identical, but there'll be stories from your early life that will help you think about the house in which you dwelled. Okay. And I want to go back to the story of living in the dwelling that said, you can't, you can't, you can't. So my grandmother would oftentimes say, oh, more, you don't want to do that. You know, you're very uncoordinated. You don't want to play sports or you don't want to go far on your bicycle because maybe you'll fall off. So all of these things were, you can't. They were daunting to me. But I'll give you another piece of the I can't, which would be a generation down, namely my mother and father. I could remember as a child, a couple of things. We only did the same things. Therefore, if it meant going somewhere, we only went to a certain number of places, Um, one restaurant, one or two places on vacation. Why? Because those were places we had been to before or things we had done previously. And what it meant is that we were never necessarily the type of family that would say, oh, there's a new thing going on or there's a new place on the map. Let's try it out. It was always the idea of sticking with what was safe, what was secure, what was a known rather than an unknown entity. And think about that. There was probably a lot of fear behind that as well. Fear of going into the unknown or venturing into the unknown. But beyond that, back to you can't. Um, defining the house in which I grew up in, I could oftentimes remember my mother. There would be something I'd want to do. Maybe it was go go somewhere with my friends or try something new. And I could often remember before I'd even introduce the new concept, her first words out of her mouth were, no, you can't. You can't. And I'd say, but mom, I didn't even tell you what it was yet. I don't care. Whatever it is, you can't do it. Case closed. And that to me was so restrictive. So I hope I painted for you a picture of the house in which I was dwelling as a young person and how those thoughts and those behavior patterns and those conformities could carry through with us as we go through life. Well, I could remember a moment of 
let's say, illumination when I was in college. And uh, it was probably maybe the third time I had met up with uh, my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time. He played basketball at college, and he said, Maura, do you want to meet me after practice one day? So I took my books, and I met him down at the uh, basketball court. He had just gotten finished practicing. He's still with the basketball, and he said, hey, you want to shoot a few? Now, I had always grown up being told I was uncoordinated. And the first thing I said to him was, oh, I can't do that. And he said to me, well, have you ever played basketball? And I said, no. And he said to me, well, Maura, if you never played, how do you know that you can't? And when he said that, how do you know you can't if you never even tried? It was like the aha moment of my life. And I thought, you're right. How can I make such a statement? But it brought me to the awareness that I was dwelling in now my own late teen life as the same person that maybe was little growing up in a home that said, you can't. So what does this mean for you? And how have you responded or related to things like that in your own life? Well, I could tell you in the course of my own life, uh, some of the changes I made, the idea of never being able to go somewhere, and I always wanted to travel, I always wanted to see new places. What it did for me is that as I got older, every single time I had an opportunity or a chance um, or an invitation to go somewhere else, I would say yes and yes and yes again. And even though I could remember, even as an adult, when my husband would go to foreign countries and I would have that same, oh, I'm afraid is something terrible going to happen because I've never been to that country. I don't know the people there. What's it going to be like? I remember thinking, Jimmy, you go there and you do your thing, even if I feel like I'm a little daunted. But by my going to, in this case now, probably 60 countries, maybe a few more, and constantly being out in new places, new environments. The whole idea of my feeling restricted as a child has really gone away. But I want to share something else um, because I mentioned that I was always told I was um, lacking in coordination, which I was because I had no practice. As I got older, I got into working out, running. Um, when I was Later in life, I actually took several years of lessons to learn how to dance because I always felt like I had no ability to dance. And that in itself, by doing it over and over and over and over and over again, I actually moved out of the internal space that said, Mora, you have no coordination to the point where I'm unaware even of that old mindset that I used to live in. And now I would say most recently, maybe in the past month or so, I started picking up pickleball. Now, I might not have been great at it. I still am not great at it. But the whole idea is there I am out on a court learning eye-hand coordination, learning strategy, practicing. A lot of things in our lives that constitute the dwelling in which we live, meaning the constructs, the limitations, the defining features, and sometimes the restricting features can be changed when number one, we have the aha moments and we're aware of them. And number two, when we decide we want something else and we do want to go beyond it, we actually take advantage of opportunities, or maybe in this case, we might even create opportunities to bring ourselves out of some old mental, emotional, and sometimes physical dwelling places we've lived in, in order to live happier, freer, um, more, more at peace, more harmoniously, uh, and more authentically from the inside out. Now, you might not have grown up in the dwelling place that said, you can't. You might not have felt um, that you were rigid or regimented as a result of it or even restricted. Maybe your experience was completely different. Maybe you grew up in an environment that had no rules at all and what you carried within your own dwelling place were things like, oh, undisciplined, I'm totally an undisciplined person or I'm irresponsible or I'm disrespectful of myself and others because maybe in my own environment that was what it was, the dwelling place in which I grew up and the very 
patternings that I acquired in my head, in my emotions, in my thought life, and I'm still carrying them forward today. Well, here's the bottom line. If you want to live happy from the inside out, that choice and the place of pivoting comes from within. It comes from the awareness. It comes from making new intentions. It comes from the idea of new behavior patterns, new responses. You might not have grown up in the dwelling place that said, I can't, but yours might have had a different name on it, a different label that you're carrying with you today in the year 2020. And something of you is looking behind and thinking, you know what? Maybe it was good for a time, but maybe now I'm looking for something else. Maybe I'm looking for something more. Maybe it's time for me to break out of old ways of doing things, old ways of thinking that are no longer serving me or others well. How can I rethink the new house, the new place, the new dwelling place within me that will make me feel and live and operate happier from the inside out? Well, that's been my thought for you in today's episode. But before we go, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast if you haven't already. Share it with friends who you think would appreciate any ideas that help them rise from where they are to where they want to be. And also, if you wish, if you're on iTunes, I'd love a brief testimonial from you about how these podcasts are helping you so that others who have never heard of me before would want to tune in as well. And secondly... If you are in business, at a university, or an organization where there's a need for a shot or a fresh infusion to see, to be better, and to do better from the inside out, write me, Maura, M as in Mary, A-U-R-A, at Maura, number four, letter U, dot com, and, uh, Invite me to come and be either a keynote speaker or, better yet, even a workshop leader where you too can learn to live better, happier, and do better as well from the inside out. Until next time, this has been Maura with More For You. For more insights on living happy from the inside out, subscribe to this podcast. To learn more about Maura, visit her moraforyou.com website where you'll find videos, blogs, books, and the Foundations of Happiness self-study e-course. Mora, number four, letter U, dot com, where Mora is always for you.